All right, good afternoon then everyone as we are at the beginning of another week of trading on Monday the 9th of September. Uh, we'll have a flick across the calendar, see what we think for the coming week ahead. We've got a few few data points that we can look to trade hopefully into uh, hopefully into next week. Um, let's start with today, very little out today in terms of data with the inflation print out of China, which was 0.6 year over year. It's here and over there, slightly above previous, slightly below consensus. So I think the market will kind of brush that off and get on to the uh, slightly more important stuff a little bit later on in the week when it comes to the US uh, US CPI print. Uh, we start tomorrow though, really, my, my main focus of attention kind of this week will be on a couple of different things, beginning with the, uh, with the unemployment rate out of the UK. Now at the last Bank of England meeting, the uh, the Bank of England did kind of suggest that inflation would run higher into year end, and then suggesting that they that may kind of negatively impact the um, the kind of medium term inflation outlook. Now we don't get inflation till next week from the UK, but you can kind of read that as a bit. We don't really want to cut interest rates through the year end. Now the Fed are in a completely different situation where they are going to cut interest rates maybe relatively relatively aggressively into the uh, into the into year end, right? You can see uh, CME's Fed Watch tool we come across here: 75% chance of a 25 basis point cut next week, 25% chance of a uh, of a 50 basis point uh, cut into next week, right? That'll be the 18th of September. On then the 7th of November, there is a 54.7% chance, or it's 54.7% priced in, that we get 75 basis points worth of cuts through to year end, and then on to the 18th of September, you kind of 50-50 split. I know it's not 50% 50%, but the markets are kind of slightly unsure whether it ends at 100 or 125 basis points worth of cuts through to year end. Now I read a report from City the other day expecting 50 50 and 50 through the year end which would be even more than what markets are currently currently pricing so that'd be an interesting one if they're proven correctly but ultimately we need to look at what the, what the economic data says and then what the fed says into next week so markets are unsure as to whether we get that 50 pay, 50 basis point cut next week or not maybe this inflation print goes away to deciding as to what we will uh, deciding what we will uh, what we will get if this comes in and misses consensus well then that will cause May not even cause the may not cause the Fed to actually go and cut 50 basis points, but will certainly increase the likelihood of it happening. And this 25% chance of a 50 basis point cut will increase through to uh, through to Wednesday, which should then result in some US dollar downside off the back of that. That that then opens up some 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 windows of opportunity on the US dollar. But I think again, circling back to the UK, with the unemployment rate expected to tick down, with GDP expected to tick up over the month of July in um in the UK and I was kind of a bit backwards looking in the uh, bit backwards looking now that we are in uh, now that we're in September but ultimately if they both come in positive and inflation comes in negative on um on, on from the US on Wednesday that opens up some opportunities long on cable right and you go and have a look at this you look at the daily time time frame on cable where we're at at this point in time that's a big daily chart it just looks like a strong uptrend clear higher lows and higher highs pretty basic analysis a strong upwards move bit of a slow corrective pullback and you know if the bank of england don't cut rates through the year end and the fed go and cut 100 basis points 125 maybe even 150 obviously we don't know the answer to that just yet that should open up further downside on the us dollar and further upside then on cable off the back of that so um charts looking like it wants to go and go and, go and continue its move higher we do need the economic data to align with that and then the charts can go and confirm themselves and then we can make make a, make a fresh attempt higher but that kind of opens up the door on some some other of the US dollar pairs and really if the US dollar sells off across the board I think dollar yen becomes a focus as well I know it's come off a long way but yeah still kind of makes sense um the the Aussie kind of tied up a bit with stocks stocks are in a pretty clear downtrend but if stocks stabilize and stocks push higher off the back of a week you know CPI print prompt further interest rate cuts there's a possibility that happens um if we get deeper interest rate cuts from the fed i'm not so sure i'd want to play stocks this week but is a possibility but i still do think cable's probably the one to go euro dollar would be one to go with as well but the ecb are due to cut interest rates on thursday kind of for me makes euro dollar a little bit tricky and cable becomes the main focus of attention um in terms of stocks i mean they're pretty firmly trending to the downside as you can see aggressive move 
on Tuesday of last week, followed up by an aggressive move on Friday of last week. Pretty bad week for stock indexes last week. Now, does that continue? I mean, I always say, like, if you just wake up every morning for the rest of your trading career and just go long stocks with a blindfold on, you probably do all right come the end of your uh, come the end of your trading career. So I'm never the best of fans of, of selling stocks, but they are firmly trending to the downside at the moment. If these start to kind of have a bit of a pullback, which they are this morning, but still firmly in the downtrend, if they start to have a bit more of a pullback and start to create some higher lows and higher highs, that opens up. Aussie, I think, and then certainly opens up cable if the economic data aligns. Oil continues to be in its downtrend. I still think you've got to be a rally seller of oil. I know we had a draw on inventories last week, and they're talking about some hurricanes in the Gulf Coast this week. But ultimately, I think that's just a bit of noise. Global demand for oil is not good at the minute, and again, the trend is your friend. So I think I think continue to sell rallies on, uh, continue to say rally sell. Ra can even talk probably <laughs> continue to sell rallies on oil bonds are a bit all over the place interesting to see what they do the yield curve did this invert last week i believe 22 months it's been inverted so maybe it's a bit of positivity but ultimately it's still not really a good thing because it's been this uh, because it's been inverted for nearly two years or coming up two years on this point so um Normally, it can kind of disinvert when it gets to the point of cutting interest rates. So it's just kind of normal price action, you think, on uh, on bonds at this point in time. But uh, if you have to trade equities, if you put a gun to my head and said trade them, I'd rather be a seller than than be a buyer. But I still wouldn't rather sell. I would actually rather just blindly buy than sell, just because of what I said a little bit earlier on. So if stocks continue their way lower, something I'll probably stay away from. But um. Yeah, we'll have to see how that uh, we'll have to see how that pans out. But oil downside, dollar downside, probably main focus of attention this week. If cable starts to bottom out and push higher, I think that could be the best trade of the week if the economic data pans out. So uh, we'll update further throughout the week if that does pan out, and we'll see how it uh, see how it ends up. But for now, best of luck out there. Um, that does actually have to lead us into the Fed next week, Bank of England next week, UK inflation next week. We'll talk a bit more about that as we go on through the week. Uh, I can't talk about that a little bit earlier, but we'll talk about it more as we go on through the week. But um, yeah, best of luck out there, folks. Get stuck into the markets, try and make some cash, and we'll uh, we'll update further on in the uh, in the week. Have a good one.